The seeds are spread on the path, on the rocks, and among the thorns they fell. We are here to worship. God is worthy. God is gracious. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds that we may be inspired to be the seed that fell in good soil. Amen. comes again in the town or on the road when we lessen someone's pain or we lighten someone's load Christ comes again when the table has been set not alone for friends and kin but the stranger we have met blessed be the name of God the Creator. Blessed be the name of God the Sent One. Blessed be the name of God our Helper. Blessed be the name and let the work on earth be done. time for prayer and praise. Christ comes again as we labor to give birth to a world where justice reigns, making way for peace on earth. Blessed be the name of God, the Creator. Blessed be the name of God, the Son. Blessed be the name of God, our helper. Blessed be the name, and let the work on earth be
The scripture lesson is from the Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that Jesus got into a boat on the sea and, it, and sat there while the whole crowd was seated on the land. Jesus began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no roots, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them, and yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And Jesus said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When Jesus was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve disciples, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look, but not perceive, and may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown when they hear. Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they are having no roots, endure only for a while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, Immediately they fall away, and others are those sown among them. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the word, world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. The Word of God. Thanks be to the Lord. Good morning, Calvary. We finished up our Holy Envy sermon series last week, and now we are into summer, although it has felt like summer for a while now. And I thought that we would spend some time today talking about the classic parable. <laughs> Good morning, Calvary, and welcome to another wonderful, beautiful Sunday. Last week, we finished our sermon series on Holy Envy, and now we have launched into summertime. And I thought that we would spend time today talking about the parable Jesus tells of the gospel or the word being like seed and it landing on different types of soil and different things happening to the seed. Um, and when I talk about this, I'm, I'm not going to explain every single type of soil in every single one of these categories. That's really kind of for you to then go home and do your own homework and to also do your own sort of analysis of, of how this would work and how this would fit. But I think that when people hear this parable of Jesus, there tends to be three different ways in which you can interpret this parable. And all three of them are valid and at the same time you can interpret the parable in one of these ways and that doesn't negate any of the others so what do i mean by that 
Well, the first way that you can interpret this parable is through a historical context. Um, and what I mean by that is, in the Gospel of Mark, there is this constant presence of the crowds. And the crowds are following Jesus wherever he goes, and the crowds are listening to Jesus, and the crowds have heard about all of these miracles and healings he's performed. And so when Jesus tells this parable then, the crowds have grown so much and they are so massive that Jesus has to get on a boat to be able to speak to all of the crowds. And so when Jesus then is talking about this soil that the so the seeds fall on the soil, but the birds snatch it away, right? Um, the seed doesn't even take root to produce anything good. It's like here today, gone tomorrow. And if you interpret this parable through a historical lens then, and you think about Mark's narrative as a whole and how there is this constant reoccurrence of the crowds, then to talk about seed that as it hits the ground, the birds come and snatch it away, that is a perfect allegory for the crowds themselves because here they are, they've gathered together, they're receiving the word from Jesus and then it's not going to take root and nothing good is going to come from it because later on these exact same crowds probably with some of the exact same people are going to be the ones who stand there and yell crucify crucify him and free Barabbas They heard Jesus' words, and it was snatched away, and it made no difference. One of the other types of soil that Jesus refers to is the seeds that fall on rocky soil. And they grow, but then wither away, and that's because they have shallow roots, right? They don't have this deep root system to really create a foundation. And if you think about it, that is a perfect allegory for the disciples. Now I know, I know, we love the disciples. We think that they're great. We have sympathy for them. We identify ourselves in the disciples. I get it. But if you think about the disciples, here are people who have been around Jesus, who have traveled with Jesus, who have heard Jesus teaching. And there have been roots. But by the time Jesus is arrested, and crucified, they're gone. They haven't, um, well, they've betrayed him, they've denied him, they've abandoned him, they've done all of those things. It's just like in the prophet Isaiah, where Isaiah says that when the shepherd is struck, all of the sheep scatter. Those are the disciples, and they are like that rocky soil. And so that is a historical interpretation of that parable, that there's um, actual groups in real life during that time that are depicted in each of these types of soil. And that's a completely valid interpretation of the parable. Another way that the parable can be interpreted uh, is as a typology. And I'm not gonna go 
back and say, this is the typology for the first type of soil, and this is the typology for the second type of soil. I, I'll let you think about that. Who, who are those typologies of? But the third type of soil, which we haven't talked about yet, is the soil that is filled with thorns. And so the seeds fall and they take root and they grow, but then they are choked out by the thorns that are surrounding them. And so if we don't look at it from a historical standpoint, but as a modern day depiction of different groups of people, who is that a typology of? And you're probably gonna feel it when I say this, but I think that that is an excellent typology of the church. Because all of these different thorns are the cares of the world and the pursuits of the world. And so they are things like power and wealth and affluence and if you think about the church then, the church, if the church hears the word of God, yes, it may take root and it may flourish, but all of those pleasures and cares and pursuits of the world are going to impact it and it will die and I know that that is really hard to hear because many of us remember a time when the church was the it place to be where all of the power holders in the community came and gathered and worshiped and people would, for lack of a better word, um, build connections and relationships with other people and do business in the church. And um, sometimes you hear that referred to as like a country club model of church, but there are some of us who, who miss that. Or we may miss the fact that the church isn't this influential force that it once was and it doesn't shape and mold society and instead it kind of maybe feels like society is is molding the church but we want the church to be the place of power and prestige and, and affluence and we have to ask ourselves can those things the pleasures and pursuits and worries of the world, can they coexist with the Word of God? And can the Word of God flourish when it is equally valued with all those things? And the answer to that is, is no. It can't. Because the Word of God is often in direct opposition to power and prestige and affluence. So that is interpreting the parable um, through different typologies, right? Modern context and typologies. The third way to interpret this parable is what I would refer to as a personal way. And this one is the hardest. Because with a historical context, we're able to say, oh, that's that group of people. Oh, that's that group of people. And we're able to kind of hold them at arm's length, right? Like we're not any of those people. And then when we interpret the parable, uh, through the lens of typology, we may feel convicted 
that we have cares and concerns for the world. But I think we can also tell ourselves, oh, well, that's really those TV evangelists who are always about, you know, send $5 or uh, those giant mega churches who um, the pastors all wear designer clothes and, and baptize Justin Bieber in a bathtub. Or, oh, that's uh, this church or that church and that doesn't include, you know, the mainline church or uh, Protestant churches in America or PCUSA churches or whatever. But this third way, this personal way, it's personal because you have to be willing and you have to acknowledge that all of these different types of soil, like the soil where the seeds fall and the birds snatch it away, or the soil that is filled with rocks and it doesn't gain root, or the soil that is among the thorns, that all of those soils exist within us and they exist at different times and they exist all at the same time. So for example, how often do we come to church or read our Bible or pray or go to Bible study or whatever and the next second, the next hour, the next day all of that's forgotten and it's just snatched away. That is like the birds inside of us. Or how many times then have we heard the word of God and it has taken root in us but then we are so terrified to be one of those people that we deny Jesus or we betray Jesus. Um, and you may be thinking, that's not me, but like being in a restaurant and, and being afraid to pray before you eat or seeing a friend who is crying and you don't pray with them or you don't invite them to church. All of those are like the times where we are like rocky soil. And then there are also those times where the Word of God plants itself within us, but we have competing priorities, like that promotion at work or winning that election or getting our way or winning that argument and that is the time that we have thorns within us and then of course thanks be to God there are also those times where the seed lands in fertile soil and it does grow. But we also have to remember that even if the Word of God grows in some places within us, there is still room for birds and rocks and thorns to creep in. And so I say all of this because I want this to be 
an invitation for us to pause and engage in self-reflection. How are you like the different types of soil in the parable? How are you like all of the types of soil? Where or when have you been like one type of soil more than another? How can you be like fertile soil? These are all things to think about. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, as you go about the rest of your summer, may you continue to use this wonderful, relaxing, warm, joyous time as a time of self-reflection. God of small seeds and mighty plants, you take our meager lives and with your love, cause them to produce acts of loving kindness for you in this world. You hear our cries and find us when we are lost and wandering in fear. You bring us home so that we may be made whole rejoicing in your goodness. Help us to joyfully serve you all our days, knowing that you are always watching over us. Open our hearts to always receive your word and open our spirits to respond in eagerness to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
transfiguring Dismantling our empires Till each one of us is free Your peace will make us one Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah Your peace will make us one Your peace will make us one Your peace will Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. You creator, God of Britain, your great name on human Seal it, seal it to